was the motivation thing a lot easier once you had passed far and you're like, okay, I know my process works. So I know that time I'm spending is going to pay off. Oh yeah. The time commitment was so much less, like it felt so much easier than before. Even my wife was like, Hey, this is way different than the last time you took it. Like you're around, like you're not cooped up in a room 24 seven, because by the time she got home, I was done studying. Cause I do an hour early in the morning and I do an hour and I, I got off work earlier than her. By the time she's at home, we can eat dinner together and I'm done. I'm Welcome to another episode of the CPA Exam Experience Podcast from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's interview, you're going to hear me talk with Tyler. So Tyler had sent me a very simple email, and his email said, Hey, just wanted to reach out and say thanks for the program. I absorbed it all from the podcast to the pro videos to the forum. I was able to knock out the four exams in six months, studying two hours a day, Took trips with my friends, drank a few beers, golfed, and didn't feel like my life was really that bad. Thanks for the valuable insight and helping me stay away from four-hour video lectures. So that was kind of the end result of Tyler's CPA journey, where he's able to pass the exams, studying two hours a day, and still feeling like he had a fairly normal life, like his entire life wasn't a huge, miserable grind. So... In this episode, we will get into all of that, exactly what he did to accomplish that and just make the CPA exams just not a huge deal. So before we get into the episode, I just want to mention two things. First, our free CPA study trainings. That's where we go through the core basics of our study approach and the strategies and why it's so different than the normal way of studying, where you just watch every video lecture, read every chapter, and then do the practice problems in your review course. You're still using your main review course, but you're using the materials much differently, which is much more effective. So the link to one of those trainings will be down in the description of this episode. The second thing is our free podcast giveaway. So each month we give away three pairs of Powerbeat Pro headphones to three random listeners who have entered the giveaway. It's just your name and email, and that link will be down in the description as well. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the interview with Tyler. Is Ohio say. Eastern time? Yes. Oh, well, I did not know that. Okay. Were you a Bengals fan? Not really. I'm a Packers fan, so it's kind of, but <laughs> a lot of my friends are Bengals fans, so I'm feeling for them. Yeah. I mean, good season, and it just, yeah, anyways. Yeah. It's going to be one of those guys every year, Mahomes or Burrow, it seems like. That makes for a good game. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so you have listened to a bunch of these. You kind of know how these go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll just talk through your whole study process. So, yeah, we'll just start at the beginning. I mean, you sent me an email, but then you kind of made comments on in a few different spots. So you did your master's back in 2016, 2017, and jumped in with Becker right after that, it sounds like. So let's start there. What was that like? Yeah, so in the master's program, we had covered some of the CPA content then, but not a lot of it. And then we did a, quite a few demos with Becker. So it kind of seemed like that was the clear choice for a study program. And then my friends in the program at that time were using it as well. So right when I got done, I jumped into that and I started with FAR and it was rough. I think the big part for me that was hard was sitting through the entire video lecture and then having the energy to do the rest of the modules. We were talking, what, five, six years ago now, but I just remember getting about, I'm going to say halfway through it, and I was really struggling kind of with the overwhelming amount of content. I remember back then reading a few Reddit threads and things like that about maybe not using all the content that they have and really just jumping into the MCQs and kind of doing that. So I think somewhere around that time, because I, I think I spent about 12 weeks on FAR that first try, somewhere around halfway to maybe two thirds of the way through, I started just doing MCQs. So I didn't even finish the all the video content. And then I went and took the exam and I thought it was a, I, there was no chance I even got a 50 on it is what I thought. <laughs> That's how miserable it was. I'm pretty sure I didn't even get the research question right. And then I got my score back, and I think I got a 71. And then I got a new job that didn't really 
wasn't really fit the mold of needing to be a CPA. So I just kind of canned it and said, this was too much. And like the drain it took on my mental health was pretty rough. So I just kind of moved on. So that was kind of my experience with Becker. I was just kind of overwhelmed by all that content. And I felt like I was not effective because I'd spend the two hours watching a lecture and I'd be on Instagram or something. Mm -hmm. not Because my mind just would drift right off. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's a really good point is like, if someone's trying to study whatever, three or four hours a day and you start with the video lecture and you go through that whole battle of you're going to probably restart it several times. By the time you finish it, a 30 minute video lecture might have taken an hour and a half or two hours. And so then you're already like wore out before you've even done the important part of the study session, which would be getting into the questions. So yeah, that's anyways. So I guess my question is, so you're working then, right? And then were you trying to study about four to five hours a day? So like that was your whole life basically? Pretty much. I, my original schedule, if I remember right, was I think three hours a night. And then I would try to get like six hours plus on the weekends. And that usually never worked out. <laughs> hmm. I mean, it sounds good on paper or when you're building out a schedule, but it's what is it, quantity over quality at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I was. And the part that like drove me crazy, I think, was the when you would read or watch a video lecture and then they just told you to highlight the book. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of weird to me. Yeah, they're right. I would say 80% of people use Becker. It's still just kind of the standard, but their lecture format is interesting where it's just kind of a voice as you highlight the book anyways. I don't know. Anyways. Okay. So, so you do, that was like, like your initial taste of the CPA study process. And then a few years go by, you just kind of forgot about it. And then what happened? So I actually started, well, for the longest time I'd had been doing tax returns kind of as a side hustle, side project. And I actually went ahead and took the EA exam, the enrolled agent exam. And this was, I think that was in July of last year. And I didn't have too hard of a time with it. I know it's really nothing compared to the CPA and its total scope, but it, the tax part of it is comparable to reg. So after I took that, I kind of was thinking, why don't I just give the CPA thing a try again? I mean, I always wanted to be a CPA and do the CPA. That's why I got my master's degree. And then my wife and I are, were trying for a child. So I was thinking maybe this would be an opportune time to give it another try before a kid comes. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember actually I was sitting in bed with my wife and I told her, I said, Hey, I think I might try to do the CPA again. And she was a little nervous because she knew the first time it took a real toll on me. But I was thinking, I don't know if there's something about, not to say anything to all the young listeners, but being a little bit older and having some experience, I felt like the process was a little easier for me this go around. So I guess anybody that's listening that has been out of school for a little while or have been out of school for a little while, I wouldn't be afraid because I think the way we process things changes as we get a little bit older, get more experience. Mm -hmm. Like that was some of the concepts in FAR that I really struggled with back then, even right out of school. We're easier now. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I think so. And I think you just absorb a lot working for a while. I mean, do, were you working in public accounting? You're doing taxes on the side, but. So I started in, I'm, I was in audit and I was doing audit for our state. We would audit all of the local government agencies from all the way down to a little township, all the way up to the city which was great. I got a ton of great experience. And then I got a job at one of the local entity, one of the local entities, like type we would audit. Okay. So I would always like tax. I thought about going into the tax route, but ended up just having an audit job. So I just kind of kept kind of stayed fresh on it ever since school, really. Gotcha. You became an expert in government accounting. It sounds like pretty much. Yeah. Which made yeah. far a little easier. Yeah, so. definitely. Okay. So had your Becker from a few years ago expired or what'd you, when you oh, wanted yeah. to jump back in, what'd you do? So yeah, it had expired and I paid a lot of money for that because it was paid for by my employer, but then I left too soon. So I paid it back. That was a whole thing. So when I was coming back to it, I knew I didn't want to, I didn't want to use Becker again. And I also didn't want to spend like three grand on study prep. So I remember doing some research and 
I kept hearing a lot of things about just using like the Ninja MCQ bank. So I thought, well, maybe if I do that, I'll just try one of the sections and just do a bunch of MCQs and see if that would work. So that's where I started and I grabbed that. But then I, I think I was like three days into it before I picked up super fast. And it was kind of necessary because I was kind of struggling with a methodology with that. Okay. Okay. Did you see one of our ads? Do you remember? Or what? How'd you come across us? I'm a big podcast person. So I was just searching CPA on okay. Spotify and, then, and you popped up and I started listening. Okay. To the interviews or did you start from the beginning? Because I think I did like five or six like solo episodes at first. I'm trying to remember if I started. I think I might have just caught like one early one, like one of your latest ones. And then I actually started going back in time and playing through them because I listened to them pretty much for motivation. And then after probably listened to the five or 10 of them, I'm like, I need to go on there and buy the, the, the pro videos. And the big thing I, when I was hearing you talk was, I was like, I want that phone app. That's really what I wanted. Yeah. I, I really wanted to maximize time. So I'm like, I need to get, and then when I got on, I was like, I might as well get it all. Cause I was kind of bought into the, the process. Like it just made mm -hmm. me. So that's where I kind of went from there. Okay, cool. So, okay. So you get our, the whole thing, the pro course and the study tools. And so you went in and watched the pro course videos first, I'm guessing. Yeah. Do you remember any key ideas or anything that just kind of made sense to you based on what you'd been doing previously? Sometimes I can't remember if I heard it in the pro videos or your podcast. So you know, you can correct me which ones, but yeah. I'll name all you. I think the main thing was the, and I'm pretty sure this is pro videos, is that quality study time that, you know, when you are studying, because this is going to be two hours a day, it's going to be like no distractions, you're bought in, and it's going to be high quality study time. And that made a lot of sense to me because I'm like, yeah, I was probably studying that three to four hours, but like an hour of it was probably worthwhile before. Mm -hmm. So that was a big one. I can't remember if this is just something you said off the cuff in, a, in an interview or if it was on there, but I like the idea of the no off days and the full commitment to what you're doing. I really like that because what I've learned, yeah, like I said, I can't tell, I remember which one way I learned this, but uh, the just kind of the consistency and the constantly, the re-review and constantly putting it in your brain over and over you're just kind of, I feel like you're trying to gain ground, but you're also trying not to lose ground every single day. So that was a huge part for me was that no matter what, even if I, it was, I could only get an hour or 30 minutes, I was going to do something no matter what. So I didn't lose any ground. Uh, yeah. The, uh, that's the first one is that's not what people usually say. I guess it's been mentioned a few times, but yeah, the idea of, and the thing is a lot of these things sound so obvious. It's almost like, I don't know like saying it was just seems so obvious, but it's so easy to not do things optimally. Like you said, I think a lot of people sit down, they're spending three to five hours, but yeah, it's maybe 30 to 60 minutes of like worthwhile time. And the bad thing is you're still taking three to five hours away from things you'd rather be doing regardless. So yeah, two hours is like, Okay, anyone can lock in for two hours. And as long as you just, okay, I'm going to put my phone across the room or put it on do not disturb, whatever it takes, you'd be surprised how much you can get done in two hours if you're not, if you're just productive the entire time. I think another so, thing in the, the pro videos was the, didn't you have one towards the end about the cram? Yeah, the, uh, the, yeah the mega cram session, just the last 48 hours before a test. I'm a big person for the mega cram for sure. That was, yeah. that was, I relied on the mega cram. Oh, I really think it's worth, it could be worth 10 to 15 points. Yeah. The two days before an exam. So would you try to always do your exams on a Monday? Yes. I always did that. I would, a lot of times I would take that Monday off so I could take the exam and then I would take the Friday off before as well. And I would pretty much do crazy 48 hour cram Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday, I would try to keep it light, but I was still doing stuff. It was more or less, how do I explain? Especially in FAR, there's like a million questions that are honestly easy if you just memorize them. So those, mm -hmm. that Sunday and then right before the exam, I would be doing like the flashcards and stuff like that or 
high level notes, not doing anything crazy, but those things I'm like, if I forget this, I'm going to be really mad at myself because it's a term or a definition. Right. Yeah. And there's, yeah, that's the thing. There's a lot of that. It's when I went in and my first FAR exam, that was, I start seeing questions. First of all, they're mostly easier than what was in my review course. But second of all, I had forgotten, just couldn't remember this one little piece to just this very simple conceptual question. So yeah, immediately that was the idea of like re-review. I'm going to constantly be re-hitting everything because I would pass this if I hadn't forgotten all this easy stuff. Okay. So going back. So after you watch the pro videos uh, and you just start applying the daily process, was there a several week period before it kind of started clicking or how did that go? Yeah, I struggled in the beginning because since I wasn't using like Becker or Roger, <laughs> I was just using Ninja and your content. It was hard for me to actually do a section, like try to learn a section at a time and do the questions because it just wasn't formatted that way. I think, I think Ninja is formatted just to, it's categorized by blueprint. So it's you okay. have by the blueprint and not some sort of order like you would see in their book. So really what I did was I kind of just did re-review the whole time. So I tried to read the Ninja book. I read it for far, but it was by the time you're done with it, it's not that great. So what I did was I read all the far notes in the first day or two. And then I just started jumping in the questions. And then it takes you a long time to do questions, especially for far, if you don't have a clue how to do them. So 10 questions could take me a long time. But I used the questions to learn. So I would just work through stuff. And then after a while, it took me, that was the hard part. The first couple of weeks, I didn't know if that was what I was doing was nonsense or not, because you're not scoring well and mm -hmm. constantly going back and looking things up. But after the first exam, I knew it just worked. Because by the time you're, half, at least for me, halfway through studying, I know what I'm not good at. I know what I'm good at. I'm scoring 70 to 80% here and there. And, I, and when I got, especially when I got that first passing score, I'm like, this works. I just have to keep doing it. And so your first one after jumping back in this time, you passed it the first time? Yes. And so that one I did. So I started with FAR and I messed up when I scheduled the exam. I thought I was giving myself either seven or eight weeks, I can't remember, but I counted on my calendar wrong and I only had six weeks. But I didn't really feel that bad about it. So I did it in six weeks, definitely did a mega cram, and then I passed far with an 84. So I was really nice. happy with that. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, yeah, so from there, you know what you're doing is working. Was it also, you mentioned how much time you're spending previously and the mental toll and everything. Did you kind of follow our format as well, where it was like mostly two hours in the morning, many sessions throughout the day, and then you're not trying to study all evening, so you just had a more normal daily routine? It was a little bit different than the routine for pro videos. I did the two hours a day. I started doing two hours in the morning, but I am, and everyone says it's not a morning person, but the two hours was a bit for me. So I kind of put this in the forum when I was talking to people that I actually split it and I did an hour in the morning and then an hour in the evening. And then okay. any time in between, I did whatever a mini session could be. Sometimes a mini session was just the app questions. Sometimes I tried to find, find ways to get study time in that didn't feel like study time. So, you know, a lot of times if you're reading like the Reddit CPA, like people are talking about questions related to FAR. So I would see that. Or if there was a like, content that I knew I struggled with, I try to like, before I watched a bunch of YouTube videos, I try to watch a YouTube video out of the a thousand on that. I was just trying to expose myself a lot and kind of crank up the amount of time. I know you've talked about that a lot in terms of try to get as, you get all these hours, but they don't feel like you have a lot of hours in. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's what's so nice about studying from your phone is it's just, I mean, I did everything in the pro course is exactly how I did it. Like I studied heavily from my phone, even though there weren't optimal phone study tools, I was like pinching and zooming these like PDFs from Wiley, but I would still do it. And uh, yeah, cause I just realized like I would read 
reached the end of like ESPN at the time, sometimes just at lunch. And then it was like, man, I spend so much time looking at my phone and I feel like I don't have time to study. So I'm just going to take all these apps off my phone, all the games or whatever I did. And uh, yeah, the idea of, I didn't think of it as a mini session at the time, but I studied from my phone constantly and it just makes a huge difference. So yeah, we, I also, normally I'm the driver in my relationships. I drive everywhere. I made my wife be chauffeur for six or five months, however long it took. Cause it was awesome because anytime we drove anywhere, I would just do many questions, the question, the quizzes on your app. And I, it just adds up. It kind of racks up, I guess. Mm -hmm. you don't realize how much that helps. And like I said, you're not losing any ground. You're keeping those little facts in your brain. Right. And uh, you've probably heard this in other podcasts, but it like try the deep level understanding of all these topics, even if you spend, I don't know, five or six hours on one lesson and feel like you've learned everything in that lesson, just the way your short-term memory works, you're going to lose like, I don't know, half of that by three days from now. And so the kind of the deep understanding or the long-term retention has to kind of come in layers. And so that's why I think the re-review is so beneficial and just kind of constantly hitting everything. Okay. So after you finish FAR, then which one did you do next? I did, let's see here. I'm looking at it now. Audit. Yep. I did audit. Okay. And uh, did you just feel, was the whole, was the motivation thing a lot easier once you had passed far and you're like, okay, I know my process works. So I know that time I'm spending is going to pay off. Oh yeah. And really, I think I, I didn't touch on it earlier. The time commitment was so much less, like it felt so much easier than before. Even my wife was like, Hey, this is way different than the last time you took it. Like you're <laughs> around, like you're not cooped up in a room 24 seven, because by the time she got home, I was done studying. Cause I'd do an hour early in the morning and I do an hour and I, I got off work earlier than her. By the time she's at home, we can eat dinner together and I'm done. I might watch a YouTube video or do something on the app here and there, but it was like, nothing was any different. So the time commit was so much less and I, it wasn't really killing me, especially when I seen an 84 on far that that really gave me the confidence rolling into the next sections because I knew I was downhill from there. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, the whole process is easier to, like it's a lot more sustainable, right? When you can have a complete mental break and your whole life isn't just work, study all night, feel like it's not working, wake up and do that again for months on end. Yeah, it just makes the whole thing easier to swallow. So what about, uh, how did you implement Sims? Cause in the pro course, it's kind of like you do it on the weekends when you have more time. Is that how you did that? Yeah, I got, I didn't really worry about them probably for the first half of my studying. I didn't really start looking at them until I felt more com comfortable with the material. Cause you, you know, I wasn't doing all the videos and lectures and I just don't absorb. I just, now I know I don't absorb information that way. I'm more of a, I have to do it to understand it kind of thing. So once I started feeling more comfortable, I'd jump into the Sims, but I didn't put a lot of emphasis on the Sims, kind of like you've said before. It's mainly the structure of them. For FAR, I think it's different. I think you really need to understand how to do the bank rec, how to do the consolidation statements and stuff like that. A few of the big ones that everyone talks about, I think you, you need to grasp on that because they always come up, it feels. But other than that, what I relied on was in my cram session, I would do, and this has been said a lot of times, I would always do the AICPA sample test because that's primarily SIMS. There's only a few MCQs. So you can mm -hmm. do quite a few SIMS right there and see how you did. And if you bomb those, that, that's kind of a telling sign. And those are, I think, a really good representation of what you're going to see. And I like doing it right before I took the exam because it's, I don't think it mattered if I took a SIM five weeks ago, but right there before kind of getting, especially like, the research question, like making sure you understand how to nail that because that's worth its weight in gold. Like figure that out and get those every time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Kind of like free square as long as you're... Did you practice those at all or just it's mostly being familiar with how the... If you go into the authoritative literature where everything's located so that you can find it? 
Yeah, I just, my only practice was the one on the, was like the one that was on the practice exam. Because gotcha. actually, Ninja doesn't really have SIM or research SIMs on their program. So, but I, when I did all the practice exams, I was able to find it. And when we haven't even touched on it, when you're really good at getting through MCQs, you got plenty of time to <laughs> yeah. look up your, you have plenty, you can take your time and not stress out and find the answer. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's one other question. So your first FAR attempt and then the second one where you passed it, was the test day experience completely different? I mean, I'm sure it was. The only real significant difference was that the first time I took it, I literally felt like I had no idea what was going on the whole time. I'm a fast test taker, so I never ran out of time, but I just walked out of there like there's no way. But when I took FAR the second time, I walked out and I thought that was a pretty fair exam. I felt like I understood most of what was going on. There's a few I had no idea, but I'm guessing those were the the test questions. So mm -hmm. coming out was a complete different feeling. And that was nice too, because when I came out the first time thinking I had no absolute chance, it kind of killed all my motivation. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And what about your, I think you mentioned flashcards. Did you kind of make flashcards kind of in the how we talk about it in the pro course or handwritten notes or what was your process for that? Yeah. So I did flashcards on my phone. Like I, I'm big, I was big on the keep it on my phone because I'm always on my phone. I use those heavily for FAR. I did not use them as much for BEC and reg, but FAR and audit I did. FAR, I pretty much put all the memorization type items on there, all the different, you know, random tidbits and facts. It wasn't any of the detailed transactions and calculations, but I still had like a hundred of them of just random little questions they could ask. And I, I would roll through those before bed. And then after a while, you uh, it's cool with the app so that you can set them up in a way where it shows you the ones you get wrong more often and all that. So I did use them pretty regularly there. Yeah. And that is what they're really good for is there is just a lot of these one-off questions that you essentially just need to memorize. And I don't really think there's a better way of doing it than with flashcards. All right, let me look back at your, I think there was one other thing in your email I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, oh, you just mentioned, so you, it was basically five months. So the second time around, it was basically five months, like end to end. Yeah, I went four for four in five months. And like I said, the first time I took far, I studied it for three months. So yeah, it was quick. And it, like I said, it did not feel, I mean, it sucked. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, that bad. That's awesome. Yeah. And you just, you said you took trips with your friends, golfed. So going on trips, would you just kind of, would you, would you try to study like the main study thing or just kind of do stuff on your phone for a few days if you're just gone for a few days? Yeah. So we did like a fishing trip up in Michigan for gosh, three or four days. And I just used the app and did, you know, many sessions. I would try to get half an hour or an hour a day. I figured that was during audit. I remember that. And I'm like, well, I'm maintaining my knowledge. There's enough in here that I'm not going to lose ground because it was later in, I think I had two more weeks to go and I had no issue with that. There, I think there was a couple of times where I didn't make, I didn't let me not being home be an excuse, not the study. I, you could just use the app. And like I said, no matter what, try to get at least an hour in going over some stuff. Yeah, I know. I think uh, you said it earlier, just doing something every day, whatever it is, you're like your morning might fall apart. It's always a possibility, especially people with kids. They wake up early or whatever, but you know, sometime in the day, you can at least find a half hour, an hour to do something and just at least maintain where you're at, if not move forward a little bit. And I just think that makes a big difference over the course of five to six weeks. So I think we kind of went through everything. So besides the mega cram session, the two days before, would you save like a week for a final review? Or it kind of sounds like you were almost working on things cumulatively the entire time. So did you do a final review or was it just those last two days? Yeah, usually it was just the last two days I'd do a final review because I was doing final review the whole time. And I found a lot of success in that. I mean, I just grinded multiple choice questions. And then if I was really hung up on stuff, I would go look for something in the book. 
But to be honest with you, most of the time I could figure out what I needed to figure out by using your notes. The way your notes were written, I just think they were succinct, like they were short enough and easy enough to understand that that usually bridged the gap for me. There's a million different ways you could look at this, but I kept finding myself wanting to get like way off in the weeds, especially on <laughs> yeah. like way, like mm -hmm. I got to figure out this nuanced random thing because with the MCQs, I know Becker's like this and Ninja's the same way. As you go through it, they have this learning mechanism and it just starts throwing you the craziest questions. And I remember hearing you talk about don't do that. <laughs> don't get so far in the weeds because you're probably never going to even see that question. So I just move on because I'm like, I want to get the five other questions right that are easy that I'm probably going to forget if I spend too much time worrying about how to do, because it was leases, like how to do some one-off lease problem. Like I said, most of it's out of my brain now, but yeah. some of those lease problems are crazy and the five different ways to do it. I would just be like, okay, I'm probably not going to see that. And if I do, they win on that one. <laughs> right. But the big thing on the big thing I found incredibly helpful in the final cram was I took your, you've talked about this before too, is finding ways to put the content in your own words. I would take your notes and I would force myself to rewrite all of your notes. And, oh, and I wow. would also force myself to write them in a way like not how you wrote them. I was not copying what you said. I was changing it into a way I would understand. And at the same time, I was trying to shorten it as much as I could. Because I was going to use that as my cram sheet for right before going into the exam and that Sunday before going in. So I took the, like all the notes, line by line, went through it, condensed it as much as I could. And I felt like my understanding of the content just went through the roof when I did that. Because I would go from like a trending score of like 65, 70% on my questions. And then I would do that and I'd come in and start getting 80s and 90s. Because it just like capped all of my... Wow knowledge. I don't know. It kind of put together all the missing pieces, you know, and then all yeah. that, a lot of that just happened right in that final cram. And I really do think you're right when it comes to a, you could have a 10 point swing easily right in that time frame. So a few people have said they do that where they like rewrite our notes. How long would that process, but the way you described it, I think is really smart, but how long would that take you? Like for so far, how long did that take? That would usually take, so like I said, I'd take Friday off. Normally, it would take most of that Friday, like normal eight to four, especially far. Some of them, depends on how long they are and how tired you get as you're going through. Yeah. But I was really committed to that because I, it really increased my results, I felt anyhow, especially after I did it with far. I'm like, I'm going to do this every single time. <laughs> so, so that took up a big chunk of that. 48 hour, but then the next 48 hours, I would do just as many MCQs as I possibly, not next 48, but the next 24 hours, I'd do as many MCQs as I possibly could. And then that last day, like the Sunday before the exam, I did the sample test and just like, I'd read those notes that I wrote again, over and over again. Cause I could take your, I could get that down to 10 pages. Yeah. I like that idea. So you're just saying by hand, you'd have the computer. I mean, you'd have the notes on your computer and you do your summary thing by hand, or would you type it in another document? I would, I would split my screen in one document on one side, one in the other. I would type it. Yeah. I'm not much hand writer. You couldn't read it if I did it. <laughs> yeah. Plus, right. Typing's just so much faster. Yeah. I guess if you can, well, everyone can type now. We just have my to mom can't. You have to remember to challenge yourself to ch put it in your own words. And I really am a big believer in that because I remember sitting in the exam and just the way I explain stuff to myself coming back into my brain. Yep. Yeah, there is something about that. It's, uh, yeah, I guess I don't mean, there, it's just, I guess it's kind of the idea of if you can teach it to somebody else type thing, which is essentially the same idea, putting it in your own words. Well, I think, oh, so, so you just recently, I mean, you basically finished when you got your fourth passing score, when a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, it was right before Christmas. Nice. So what you, did you guys do anything to celebrate or what was it after that first experience? And then in a, almost the same amount of time you were starting and all the way done, I mean, what was that like? Was it almost surreal that you were just done finally? Yeah, it was a crazy feeling because I took 
what was interesting was I got an 84 on FAR and I took audit. And I, when I walked out of audit, that was my second exam. I thought I absolutely crushed that exam. Like I thought I aced it and I got <laughs> 79 and I'm like, what is going on? Am I doing something wrong? Cause I felt like <laughs> I aced it. But then what was funny is I followed up with BEC and this is where it gets strange. BEC I thought was the hardest exam for me. I don't know why, mm -hmm. not even the, I mean, studying sucked. And all the different calculations. But when I took it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, I don't know what people are talking about. This is hard. And then I got 93 on it. Made no sense. Hmm. So I took reg last because I, that really technically is one of my stronger areas because I just took the EA exam and I didn't feel that great coming out of that exam either. So I was sitting with my wife and my mother-in-law and we were actually at a restaurant and yeah, I knew the scores might come out early but you never know when they come out. So I was, we were already there when it came through and I got a 92 on it and it shocked me. Like I was just floored yeah. and it's like, I don't know. It's just a, it's a crazy feeling just to be like, okay, I'm done. And I never have to do that again. And just, you can't, you take the exams and you just truly have no idea what the score is going to be. Because like I said, you think you passed it, like you crushed it, and then you get a lower score. You think you completely bombed it, or you had no idea, and you get a crazy high score. It doesn't make any sense sometimes. Right. Yeah, those are those are pretty high scores for how fast you did it. That's pretty awesome. And you also, you were only using Ninja. So what, 70, 70 bucks a month times like five? <laughs> so you spent like $350, and I guess our program but yeah that's pretty good that's real good you're probably going to have a lot of people attempt to do it your way after this comes out because it's I just would, yeah i would just say they just need to make sure they learn in that method right everybody learns differently and i found out that just doing problems consistently and as many as i could do really worked for me just because i kind of need to be mechanically doing the stuff to learn it and i'm just I'm going to zone right out if I got to read everything and watch videos. I need it broken down into micro-sized pieces and go through it. So if that's you, I would recommend doing a ton of MCQs. And then if you're really hung up on stuff, then utilizing lectures or the book. But, you know, even then, <laughs> the super fast CPA notes, because usually you can find it there faster. And it's presented in a way that actually is relevant for the exam. Because those books just get so far into the weeds. Mm -hmm. And then said it earlier, you get to the exam and it's not like, it's not like that. The cra I feel like the crazy hard questions you get on the exam are pre-test questions a lot of times anyhow, because they're just so way out of left field. And you're like, I would have seen that, I feel like, in the materials. But Yeah, that's really cool. Did you say you read our notes from start to finish at the very beginning of a section as well, just to get an overview of everything? Yes, I always did that because I felt like I couldn't go into the questions completely blind. So I would, those were nice because I could get a real nice high level look. And then when I get to the questions, I would at least have an understanding of where they were coming from. And then it kind of helped me kind of work through some of the problems or at least get a start working through them. Because especially on FAR, I think if I always come back to FAR, some of those you're not going to know how to do if you haven't spent a lot of time trying to learn how to do them if you're just jumping right in the questions. But yeah, I, I'm a big believer in the notes. <laughs> they were, that's probably the most used thing. I mean, the audio is great too, but the act just actually physically reading and those and rewriting those notes was huge for me. Yeah, that's, I really like that idea or how you described it. Kind of making a summary and every little point you write out is you're just kind of translating into your own words or your own form of how you understand it, I guess. Shoot, I had one other comment on something about that. Oh, practically speaking, so would you keep our notes up on like in the PDF on your screen while you did MCQs in case you wanted to find anything or would you just use the app or how'd you do that? Yeah, typically I would keep it up on the screen and then really I only needed it in the beginning for the most part for the first few weeks because after that, the solutions on the questions do a pretty good job of of kind of keeping you cued in. But a lot of times I'd be like, okay, I don't understand. Like sometimes there would just be a crappy explanation. I'm like, I got to go back to the notes and understand this. And that's where I, some of the deep learning I think worked for me because then I got to, okay, I have a, an issue where I don't understand why I got this wrong. Now I got to jump back and kind of figure out why 
I did it wrong. And I think in those scenarios, it kind of helps build, like you said, almost layers. You're just building layers over and over again on certain topics. And I think the other thing you have to remember too, is that it's, I think it's physically impossible to be an expert on all of it. Like you're going to do stuff wrong and continue to do stuff wrong. You're just kind of doing your best at that point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then another thing you were saying about uh, like your process was having to use the questions and, and Sims to learn. And my thing is that my argument is well, there's your learning styles and that can be helpful or whatever, but regardless of what your learning style is, if you're going to pass these exams, you have to go in there and answer the MCQs and Sims. So at some point in your study process, you need to do a lot of that. I mean, it's another one of those things that just sounds so obvious, but a lot of people don't spend a lot of time doing that. I would say, venture to say, it's almost like, quote unquote, hack, right? Like after a while of doing those problems, you just start to get an understanding of how they're asking them and how to get, it's weird to say this, but how to get the right answer. Uh, uh, because I, by no means, am an expert in financial accounting and reporting. Most of that stuff is absolutely out of my brain now, but I felt like I did so many questions that I could just fly through. I'm like, I, I left every exam with several hours left. So <laughs> you go oh, after doing so many, because I remember when I started doing FAR questions, I would try to get, I remember you talking about, try to do one question a minute. And that was really hard in the beginning. But then towards the end, I was like, I drank like three monsters that day because I'm just cringing <laughs> like crazy. And I'm doing questions so fast because you just get better at it and you start to pick up like, where in the problem they're asking the question and where all the content is and all that, it's like the repetition really matters. I know a lot of people talk about don't memorize the questions, but I didn't really run into where I felt like I was memorizing any of them. There's so many questions in the banks usually. Yeah. Um, you do have to remember to make sure you're actually looking at the solutions and understand why you're getting stuff right. Don't get me wrong there, but there's method to the madness, I think, in terms of the volume. Oh, definitely. And I like how you just explained that because a lot of times if I'm in the forum or in an email, if I'm someone's asked me a question about the our process in general, and they're just starting the study process, and I'll say like, it's, this might sound weird, but you're trying to get good at answering MCQs. And it's basically what you just described. There's all these nuances to it that you can't really put into words, but you can get, you get good at it almost despite the material itself. Like you can get good at taking these tests. Yeah. That's basically what you just described. I talked to several people who kind of were going through the process at the same time. And I guess I always cringed at the idea there. I think there are a group of people that really truly feel like they have to get in here and, and deeply understand the material. And they're like, well, I'll just give myself plenty of time. Like I'll do far over three months. And I think that if you, I mean, you might be able to do that and you might really have a great understanding, but I think there's a ton of value in understanding that, you, like you said, you've got to get good at this test and that you have to, <laughs> there's a lot of short-term memory that's going to be relied on. Like there's mm -hmm. so much content that I don't think, I don't think the professors and the lecturers at Becker could go take far and pass it today, even though they're, they're doing all that study material, they could understand it really well. But at a certain point, a ton of it is short-term memory. Get in there and study and do it quickly so that you can take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's people like to use the marathon. Was it a sprint or a marathon? And to me, it's like the 400 meters. It's a sprint yeah. that's pretty far. And it's, yeah, it sucks. Like you got to hit it hard every day, but short enough that you don't burn out anyways. It's just this balance. Okay. Well, all right. I don't want to take much more of your time. You gave a lot of really good, a lot of really good tips. I'm glad I heard that summarizing our notes thing. I think a lot of people will use that. So even if it's something we already talked about, what would be your three biggest tips for someone that's like maybe struggling with their study process to get it figured out? I think that you have to kind of be honest with yourself about the commitment to it and the 
doing something every day. And primarily when I say doing something, I mean questions. Uh, I think what I ran into on my first failed attempt was that doing something, I'm like, oh, I'll listen to the lecture. Well, that was kind of a half-hearted attempt and I was not getting anything out of it. But when I converted to, I'm doing like, my goal most of the time through this was to try to hit 100 questions a day. That was next to impossible in the beginning. But once I got in the groove, I'm like, I'm going to get that 100 questions done because that's what I need. And then if I feel like I have extra time, I'll pick up some stuff. So mm -hmm. you get in there and do those questions. It's going to feel impossible. But by the time you get to where you're about to take the exam, you're going to feel a lot better. So that's one. I'm going to say it again, though. And number two is the mega cram. Whatever really works for you, rewriting the notes worked really well for me, but also doing another, I just four or 500 MCQs in a day helps as well. Just cramming all that information into your brain. That was huge for me. And then three, I think is the, what we just talked about in terms of don't space these exams out too far thinking that's going to help you. Uh, because I think at a certain point you're going to know as much as you're going to know, and then you're just battling, losing information out of your brain. Don't be afraid to take an exam if you feel like you're not ready. You have it that cram, if you, especially if you have it scheduled, and go for it because I think you could surprise yourself. Yeah. I, and I liked how you said the 100 questions a day. That's come up a few times on these interviews. Not, well, a few people have said 100 questions a day specifically, but I think more so the idea is uh, that's like this concrete. It's like if you hit that, you have a concrete thing that you've accomplished. Whereas, yeah, you could half watch a lecture for six hours and you haven't really done anything. But knowing that you've worked through 100 questions, or even if it's 50 in the beginning, you just have this thing that you've done something that like matters or translates on test day. So, yeah. The other thing I had, and I was going to say it, there were several times during this when I was in the middle of a study session and like, I could tell I was just not with it that day. Like I was not making any headway. I was making stupid mistakes, things like that. So don't be afraid to give yourself a break and come back to it. If after, like I said, when I was trying to get, say I was trying to get two hours in in a row and I'm like an hour and 15 in and like my brain's shutting off, I would just call it because I'm like, this is not productive. And if I can find a way to get back to this 45 minutes and another m method, I will, but I'm not going to sit here and just be not really actively engaged. Yeah, I think that's, I noticed that I did that quite a few times. Yeah. And that is smart too. Yeah. It's like fine line between that and making an excuse for yourself. But it's also, if you're in control and you're putting in the time, you're disciplined, you also have the freedom to like do that. If it's just not working on a certain day, I think that's a good idea. Sorry, last question. Where did you get that idea? Because I don't say that in the pro videos or anything to kind of summarize the entire notes. So I'm kind of lazy. So when we were <laughs> studying and I, and I was listening to all your podcasts, about how everyone's like, well, yeah, I'm taking notes and I'm putting them in my own words because you kept telling people to do that. I'm like, well, I haven't been taking notes to this because I'm bad about, if I take notes, they get thrown in a pile somewhere and I never come back to them, not organized at all in that way. So I kind of was like, well, how can I do that? And I did it a little bit with flashcards, but I'm like, how can I really do that with the rest of these? And that's kind of what hit me when I was doing FAR is it? I'm looking at these notes, I'm reading them and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not absorbing this because I'm, I need to physically be doing something. So I was like, I'm just yeah. going to write all these in my own words, kind of like what everyone's been saying forever as you go through the process. And I came out of the other end of that. It was a lot of work, so don't get me wrong, but I felt way more confident on a bunch of areas that I knew I wasn't as good at. Uh, yeah. I really it off a bunch of areas for me. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm, I mean, and the next thing I was going to say is, I mean, I'm glad you found us. I'm glad you, I'm glad it helped you so much or the notes, the strategies, whatever, but you got really good results passing start to finish in five months and you weren't studying all day, every day. That's awesome. Congrats, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I appreciate the program. And I, I kind of hopeful that people see this, especially the people who have been out of school, because I've been what's that six years since I touched it and everything changed. First time I took far, it's way different. I think IFERS was still in it. Yeah. So you can do it. And if you just stick to this method and you stick to hitting the questions, it's just consistency and you'll get there. Awesome. So that was the interview with Tyler. I'm sure you found that very interesting and informative and hopefully motivating to know that it is possible 
when you have your study process locked down and every hour that you spend studying is highly effective and efficient, you really can get more done in two hours a day than most people can in four to five hours a day studying the normal way. So again, to learn how to do that, the best place to start is with one of our free study trainings. That link will be down in the description of this episode. If you found this episode helpful, please take a second to leave a rating and review on the podcast app or like and comment on YouTube. But most of all, take a second to share these interviews with someone who's also working on their CPA exams. Because these interviews collectively, where you can hear from more than 100 successful CPA candidates about exactly what they did to both realize and fix their own study mistakes and make their study process highly effective and efficient to where they pass their exams. These interviews are the most helpful free resource available anywhere for someone trying to figure out their own CPA study process. So thanks for watching or listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.